I won't accept this as an offer. In, in other words, he painted an extreme scenario. You're talking of what you have, I'm saying, go more, go wide, go open, go large, go macro, put the whole world on that side. And this side asked me, bare minimum, entertain the thought of forsaking, and I'll say, it's not a deal. We say, you know what, but in my mind I knew I wasn't going to do it, and with that money I can help the poor. Why can't you help the poor with the money that's in your pocket? Why can't you help the poor with the money in your pocket? Make the call today, my brother. Don't clutch onto it. Don't become obsessed with it. Nothing is mine. Shatallah. Bukhari rahmatullah alayhi. An orator like no orator. A public speaker like no public speaker. I heard scholars saying he used to comfortably address the audience from Rishat and Fajr. In the latter part of his life, he had a stroke which affected his speech the most. He said, my Allah taught me I wasn't speaking. My Allah taught me I wasn't. I am not here because I want to be here. It's the sheer mercy of my Allah. Nothing is ours. Anyway, Abdullah ibn Huzafa radiallahu anhu says, I will not accept this as an offer. The king says, okay, bring the most beautiful woman. I'ituni bi malikati jaman al-bilad. Miss words. If I may translate that phrase. Usher her into the room. And then leave them for a moment together. And the obvious will happen. So she's ushered into the room. This is a young man who's away from home. Temptation is at its peak. The most beautiful of women is put in front of him. She walks into the room and she is told to then undress herself. She then gradually undresses herself. After a moment of silence, there is a loud scream, there is an awful cry. Tasroh, iftahu. Suddenly everybody dashes, opens the door. And okay, right, can we accuse him of rape, of advancement, of this? She comes out and she says words that made me cry when I read it. I read it in the writings of Ibn Jawzi, rahmatullah alayhi. She said, Wallahi ma yadri adhakarun ana am unta. Wa wallahi ma adri adhkhaltumuni ala basharin am ala hajar. By Allah, this man doesn't know if I'm a male or I'm a female. And by Allah, I don't know if he's a human or a stone. By Allah, this man doesn't know if I am a male or a female. We will know what nationality she is. You can just see from her nose. You can see she looks like, yeah, from her hands you can see she's in veil, but you can see she's young. My brother, my brother, have I only got this venom thrown out from my eyes? Have I only got this poison going out from my eyes? I cry sometimes to my Allah and I talk to Allah. Oh my Allah, when will my life change? Oh my Allah, when will my attitude change? Oh my Allah, when will it be that a sister passes by and I don't harbor a nasty thought? Oh my Allah, when will it be that I don't have a fantasy for the woman across the road? Oh my Allah, if this woman who comes so modestly clad and speaks to me, asking an aspect of deen, if you have to unveil to her how dirty my heart is, Perhaps the earth will split and swallow her if she has to know how evil I am, my Allah. By Allah, he knows not if I'm a male or a female, and I know not if he's a human or a stone. The king says, okay, we'll kill him. So two innocent sahaba are brought prisoners, a pot of oil is burnt, and they are hurled in, and they are burnt. And then Abdullah ibn Huzafa is taken. As he's going, he starts crying. So the king says, okay, looks like now we've got him thinking, and he's changed his mind. Bring him back. He's brought back. You're crying, change of mind. He said, My Allah gave me such pleasure in obeying him now. What did I say? You do it and then you see the pleasure, the excitement, the happiness. The ultimate is just not to obey your creator, but to cherish his obedience. That's it, my brother. You bring me a glass of water. He pulls his face up and he goes and he brings it. And the other one doesn't bring, and then you admonish him, and he says, Dad, but I brought it. Yeah, but honestly, with the attitude that you brought it, maybe if you didn't bring it, I would have been better. My brother, I'm asking you, with what attitude do you get up for Fajr? With what attitude do you fast? 
Do you think you're doing my Allah a favor? How can you impress my Allah by abstaining from food when he never eats? How can you impress my Allah by abstaining from drinks when he never drinks? How can you impress my Allah? He's only trying to help you to get you closer to your paradise. Oh my boy, how much must I impress upon you? Your studies, your nobility, your character is to make better of you and there's nothing for me. And the son says, no, no, you want it, but I'm telling you it's for you. And this conflict of interest, and he just tells me he doesn't cross that hurdle, the antagonism continues. And the day the boy realizes, and reality dawns, and maturity sets in, that I'm doing it for my own interest. Now he's motivated by his own agenda. مَا يَفْعَلُ اللَّهُ بِعَذَابِكُمْ إِنْ شَكَرُتُمْ وَآمَنْتُمْ My Allah says my sovereignty is at its greatest. Punishing you can't make me greater. Punishing you can't make me greater. But if you choose to be stubborn, and if you choose to be obstinate, then even the Prophet said, فَكَيْفَ أَسَى عَلَى قَوْمٍ كَافِرِينَ How do I lament the fate of a nation who chooses to deny? You tell him, listen, he says, no, you tell him, listen, no, then there's consequences. Now you want me to cry. How do I cry when you chose to disobey? You tell the boy, don't run, you're going to get hurt. No, no, I'm okay. My baby, you're going to get, no, I'm okay. And when he gets hurt, what is it? Good. You learned. That's what you're going to say. So he said, I, I am crying, not because I'm going to be burnt, but I'm crying that I'm feeling so close to my Allah and I honestly wish I had multiple lives, I could lay them down one after the other but I feel sad that I don't have more and I can relate with this sometimes for your partner, you're having a good moment and you know, you're flying overseas and she says, buy me this and you say, that's fine and then, uh, how much is it? it's a thousand dollars, oh leave it my darling, my beloved Wallahi, even if it's a thousand pounds Without twitching my eye, without frowning for you, I will do it. And trust me, if it was 10,000 pounds, if I had it, I would put it down. It's not the money, it's just to make you happy. We have these moments in our relation. The pious had it with their Allah. My Allah, I only have one life. Had this man asked more, and you favored me with multiple, I wouldn't have winked my eye, I would have laid them one after the other. I would have laid them. We haven't been introduced to this. Sayyidina Ali radiallahu Abdul Salam ibn Shaddad says, I heard from Ghazwan ibn Jarir, who says, I heard from, his, from my father, and he says, one day we were sitting with Ali radiallahu anhu, and then the topic of immorality started. The nafs, the ego, the carnal desires. So Ali radiallahu said, أنا أخبركم بأعظم الزنا عند الله. Should I not tell you of the most worst form, the most despicable, the most deplorable, the most detestable sin in zina? So we said, but Ali, would it not be correct to say every form of zina is deplorable? He said, yes, but one is worse than the other. Now before I tell you this, yeah, I must share with you how the devil misleads everyone. The devil has a different ploy. But he traps everyone. So one brother came to me once. He said, you know, Sheikh, I've got this bad habit. My gaze roams. But one thing is for sure. I will never look at a non-Muslim woman. I only look at Muslim women. And I always tell myself, I look at, like, you know, someone that I could potentially get married to. So astaghfirullah, I don't justify that. But I have that degree of discipline in me. I wouldn't want to cast a lustful gaze on a non-Muslim woman. But I say rather, I'm doing it wrong, but better off with a Muslim sister. And by Allah, this is not a thumbs up. I'm telling you what had happened. Another brother came to me. He said, you know, Sheikh, I have this bad problem and you need to advise me. But I always feel, I said, why must I cast the dirty glance at our Muslim pure sisters? I rather look at a non-Muslim woman and you know, Allah must forgive me for my wrong. But I say, no, this is not right with our Muslim. I said, subhanallah, the devil is playing tricks and clapping hands. He got this one hooked here, he got that one hooked here, and this one is appeasing himself. I'm not all that bad, I'm not all that bad. So like how, how often, you know, I'm, I'm not, I don't want to backbite anyone, but I'm just saying. You're just saying what? You're backbiting. 
Look here, we're not here to badmouth anyone. Astaghfirullah, I'm not saying that. I'm not saying I'm better. It's not a holier than thou attitude. But just as discussion, you know, that, uh, that brother is really amazing, he's wicked. What's that, my brother? You are sugar-toting it. So today, if you look at all your pediatric medicine, everything is sugar-coated. The child wants the sweetened medicine. That's what you do. It's the same thing, but what happens is, when you sweeten it, it compromises. The more bitter, the better. The more bitter, the better. That's what we know and what we learn. So I said, the devil got him trapped this way, the devil got him trapped this way. There is no change. The Prophet ﷺ is in me now. Fadl ibn Abbas, his cousin, the brother of Abdullah ibn Abbas is mounted on. A woman from the Khass Am tribe comes. She was a woman, young and beautiful. And she comes to ask a question to the Prophet So Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi took the neck of Fadl ibn Abbas, Nawa Anuq al-Fadl, and said, Fadl, look that way. So Abbas Radiallahu was present. Oh Nabi of Allah, Nawaita Anuq al-Fadl, you turn him like this. My Habib Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, رَأَيْتُ الشَّابًا وَشَابَّةً فَلَمْ آمُنْ عَلَيْهِمَ الشَّيْطَانِ I seen a young man and a young woman coming at one venue. I did not consider them immune from the devilish influence. I'm saying Allah's Nabi is present. It's Hajjatul Wada. It is the combination of nobility to perfection. There couldn't be a better venue, a better person, a better thing. And today the slogan is, our hearts are clean. Our hearts are clean. I don't have evil intentions. My brother, you can sit by fire and maybe not get burned, but you'll feel the heat. You will feel the heat. And one day you'll be burnt. Anyway, Sayyidina Ali radiallahu anhu said, إِنَّ أَعْضَمَ الزِّنَا عِنْدَ اللَّهِ أَنْ يَزْنِ الرَّجُلْ بِزَوْجَةِ الرَّجُلِ الْمُسْلِمِ The worst form of zina is that you make zina with a Muslim married sister. He said that the worst form of zina. Why? You're supposed to be a guardian to her protection. You're supposed to be protecting and safeguarding her. You've violated the boundaries of protection. You've showed no regard to that. And on the reverse, you've perpetrated the offense. And then the Prophet and then Sayyidina Ali radiallahu anhu said, Inna nasa yursalu alayhim yumil qiyamatu rihun. On the day of qiyamah, this foul smell will be unleashed on the occupants of hell. Allah save us. And it would be so, so unpleasant that it would become unbearable. They would block their nose. Suddenly a person will call out and say to them, هَلْ تَدْرُونَ مَا هَذِهِ الرِّيحَ الَّتِي آذَتْكُمْ Do you people know where this foul smell is coming from? They will say, no, we don't know. إِلَّا أَنَّهَا قَدْ بَلَغَتْ مِنَّا كُلَّ مَبْلَغْ But it has really hurt us and we cannot bear it any longer. Then Sayyidina Ali radiallahu anhu said, it would be said to them, أَلَا إِنَّهَا رِيحُ فُرُوجِ الزُّنَاتِ أَلَّذِينَ لَقُوا اللَّهَ بِزِنَاهُمْ وَلَمْ يُتُوبُوا مِنْهُ This is the foul smell from the five private organs of the males and the females who indulged in zina, and this is causing this discomfort that every dweller of hell will hate them because of this pain. Two incidents, inshallah, and some concluding advices. Ibn Jawzi rahmatullah alayhi makes mention of a man who was walking, one about a pious woman and one about a pious man. We are living in an atmosphere of sin and vice, immorality. How do we address the issue? How do we move on forward practically? Anyway, this man is walking and suddenly his gaze falls on a woman. He is drawn towards her like a magnet. I don't think I have to explain that. It happens more than often. He couldn't contain himself. So he decided to put pen to paper. And when a man wants to praise a woman, your wife will tell you what you said to her. On the reverse, one of my scholars used to say, when does a woman praise her husband? Two times. One is before she's married to him. You know who I'm getting married to? You know who I'm getting married to? He's the dean of the faculty at that tertiary institution. You know that prominent scholar? I'm getting married to him. She praises him before she gets married. And the next time she praises him, when his funeral leaves the house. Your father was a great man. Your dad was a great man. Your dad. My sister say to him when he's alive. Don't spare the praise. We have become a nation. It takes the deaths of people for us to acknowledge them. 
ولقد جاءكم يوسف من قبل بالبينات فما زلتم في شك